Okay, um, we have gone through then, and we have solved so far out of our problem list four of them for inverse the plots transforms. Now I want to tackle this one. So here we have 4s divided by, and we can factor this out because s squared minus 1, that's the difference of two terms. So we have s plus 1, and we're going to use the method of partial fractions, which is what we're doing. You have to have it factored out like this. s plus 1 times s minus 1, that's this, s squared minus 1, and this is squared. So now this is going to come out being equal to Or s divided by s plus 1 squared times s minus 1 squared. So s plus 1 is squared and s minus 1, both of these are squared. So we want to use partial fractions. Let's just write this figure. Let's just make some room here. We have it like this. 4s divided by s minus 1 squared times s plus 1 squared. So these are both linear terms, but both of them are squared. So now, when we use the method of partial fractions, it's going to look like this. We'll have a over s plus 1 squared plus b divided by s plus 1 plus c divided by s minus 1 squared and our last problem is this one minus s squared minus 6s plus 14 divided by s cubed minus s squared plus 4s minus 14. So let's make some room. Okay, and now this is going to be plus d divided by s minus 1. When you have linear factors that are raised to a power, this is how you have to handle them. And by the way, if uh, you're a little bit rusty on your technique of partial fractions, if you go to Digital Dash University and look in the free calculus videos, and then go to the section on integration techniques, in that section there we have an introductory video on the different ground rules that apply to the technique of partial fractions. And then we have several videos afterwards where we apply the technique. So you might find those useful if you become somewhat rusty with partial fractions. But this is what we have. Now we multiply both sides of the equation by this. So we have 4s. That will be equal to a times s minus 1 squared plus b, and that's going to be multiplied by s plus 1, times s minus 1 squared, plus c, that's going to be multiplied by s plus 1 squared, plus d, and that's multiplied by s minus 1, times s plus 1 quantity squared. So what we have to do, obviously, is multiply these out here and here, multiply this out, and then collect like terms. And when you go through all of that algebra, 
what you end up with is this. 4s, that is equal to b plus d, times s cubed plus, then we have a minus b plus c plus d times s squared plus, and we have minus 2a and minus b plus 2c minus d times s. And then there's also plus a minus b plus c minus d for constants. And that has to be equal to 4 times s. So here, using the technique of partial fractions, we have four variables that we have to solve for, a, b, c, and d. And we have from here four equations. On this side, there is no s cubed terms. So you know that b plus d has to be 0. There's no s squared, so these have to add up to be 0. There's an s term, so these have to add up to be equal to 4. And there are no constants here, so these have to add up to be 0. So let's see. We've got four unknowns to solve for and four different equations. Um, we look at this one. You know right away, d equals minus d. So we're set up for that. Um, then let's see. What else do we have? This is zero. So we have a minus b plus c plus d that's equal to zero and then we have from here a minus b plus c minus d equals zero and here D is minus B. So from this one, we have A minus 2B plus C equals 0. That's from this equation. And then from here, D equals minus D. So we have minus B plus positive B. So the B's cancel. So you have A plus C equals 0. And the only way that these two equations can be satisfied is for b to be equal to 0. But if b is equal to 0, then d is going to be equal to 0. So we have b is 0, d is 0. So that helps us out, obviously. And now here, from this one, we're going to have a, that 0, that's 0. So we have a plus c. That's going to be 0. So we have, ignore that. We were already used that. We're going to use this one. Well, this is 0 and this is 0. So we have minus 2a plus 2c. And that has to be equal to 4. And let's see. From here, we can determine a equals minus c. So this would be plus 2c. So we have 2c plus 2c equals 4. c equals 1. And therefore, a equals minus 1. So we go up to here, a is minus 1, c is plus 1, that's 0, and that's 0. So let's make some room.
Now let's see, we have f of s. equals minus 1 1 over s plus 1 squared and here we have plus 1 1 over s minus 1 squared and if you look at your table of transforms then when we have s plus 1 squared or s plus or minus k squared, that means we have an x times an e to the plus or minus x power. So this one here, this comes out to be equal to minus 1, that's minus x, e to the minus x plus, is plus 1, so that's x, e to the plus x. And that right there, that's not f of s, though, that's its inverse Laplace transform. So we get the inverse Laplace transform of f of s, that's equal to x times e to the plus x, and here minus e to the minus x. So it took us a while to get it and sometimes that can happen when you're doing, uh, when you have what a Laplace transform is and it's too complicated so it doesn't fit into any of our formulas that we have our, in our table of transforms. Many times we have to do, what many times what we have to do is go about, use a technique of partial fractions to simplify this and then once we get it simplified, then usually we can look at it right away. And if you've been keeping up with our table of transforms, we can immediately write down what the inverse Laplace transform is. So that takes care of for this one. We have one problem left. We have s squared minus 6s plus 14 divided by s cubed minus s squared plus 4s minus 14. Um, come back. Join us in the next video, and we'll try to get our final problem taken care of.